Next, we're going to have Amy Schmidt. Um, she's going to talk about transforming manure from waste to birth to support responsible livestock production in Nebraska. All right, so thank you, Melanie, for the introduction. Um, so I'll start off by saying that this is a, a kind of a program, and this is a larger program, and I'm only going to talk about a part of it here, I guess is how I should say it. Um, so there's uh, kind of one of our big efforts in Nebraska is talking about manure value, about um, the value to soil health and, and the nutrient value of it, trying to make connections between crop and livestock producers to um, move manure from nutrient intense areas to areas where it can be utilized um, in place of commercial fertilizer, for instance. So, um, so this particular project was um, entirely focused on just kind of an educational social media campaign. We do have demonstration events and on-farm research and those sorts of activities we're doing as well. But this one is, is um, particularly focused on just motivating crop farmers to utilize manure on cropland and to do so efficiently uh, by improving their understanding of the benefits of manure as a soil amendment and the risks of nutrient imbalance. So our formula for this particular project was we have a lot of research-based publications and resources um, that are currently housed on our uh, manure.unl.edu website. We are constantly adding to that. We try to add a couple articles each month. Um, what we don't have are graphics to, mo to uh, market those. And, you know, marketing is kind of, I guess we've always tried to market our programs, but here recently it feels like extension administrators are really pushing, you know, you've got to market your project. And I'm not a marketing person, I'm an engineer, so we just do it and we expect people to pick it up and use it, right? Um, so this was kind of, this was a learning curve for me. And then the other is we can reach, um, we can reach a lot of people when we send out uh, news articles, um, public service announcements, whatever but we're probably not reaching everyone that we would like to. So the other part of it for us was this communication network. And we thought if we can combine these three things, um, we could probably improve our brand recognition. So do people know who the animal manure management team at, at Nebraska, who, who that is? Um, could we probably get more traffic to our website, more people uh, looking at the articles that we're taking so much time to write and put up there? And at the same time, can we improve the use of manure in crop systems? So, um, so our approach was, we've got all these resources, we're adding to them every month. Um, they're, in a, they're in a good repository on our manure.unl.edu website. Um, not a lot we need to be doing right there. Development of marketing graphics for resources was where we really needed to hit it hard. Um, and then dissemination of that content via social media. So uh, Leslie has a social media account. I have one. Uh, Rick Kelsch has one. I, I don't know, Rick Stoll, if you have Twitter or that, but yeah, I've never put it, I hardly ever have put a thing on Twitter. Honestly, I just, I don't have time. You know, and I don't have time to think about how to, how to say that in a short little um, snippet of information. So, um, so this is our, our, website that we um, that we run and, and really Leslie and uh, Rick Kelsch uh, take care of getting new articles up there. Leslie's very good at nagging me in particular about the articles I say I will write that I don't and then they eventually make it up there. Um, but, but so this is a list we put together. Every time we add a new article, uh, here's the title and here is a, a shortened link to it because what we want to be able to do with our social media is um, put something out there that's attractive and draws someone's attention in. We don't want to tell them everything we have to say, but we want to link them to the article where we do tell them everything we want. Okay, so the, so the next step was our marketing network. <clears throat> and like I said, we have a lot of people who, who pay attention to our, our team, I think, and they come to our trainings and um, utilize our resources, but there's a lot of people that we didn't feel like we were reaching. So we get livestock uh, operators and manure haulers. Um, we get those at our trainings because they have to 
the, the haulers don't have to be there, the, the permitted CAFOs have to be there. Um, but really, our, our audience for this one was crop producers, right? We, the manure people know the value of their manure for the most part. We want crop producers to start um, viewing manure as a, a good addition to their fertility program. So we started by visiting all of these um, different commodity groups, either um, visiting with them face to face or, or over the phone and, and explaining like, here's what we're trying to do. All we ask of you is each month I'll send you an email that says there's new content available. Um, I'll give you a, a suggested text to go with a tweet or a Facebook post. Um, and we just ask that you share it. If you, if you like it, <clears throat> share it on your current social media. Um, and uh, if, you, you know, if it's not relevant to you, then you, know, you don't have to share it. So they all were fine with that. You know, that's pretty, um, we're, not, we're not asking much of them with that. So, um, so our social media outreach, um, like I said, we had to come up with a way that we have that information, we can get it to these people easily, and they don't have to use much brain power to grab it and post it somewhere. Um, so this, we started with a content database. Um, actually, I started by hiring a student from Ag Leadership and um, Education Communication Department who was more creative than the engineers on the project. So we, we do a lot of black and white articles. They make it interesting to everyone else. And so um, a lot of the graphics that I'll show you here in a bit have come from those students that I've had working for me. <clears throat> um, so what we do, we have, you know, we have our, our box folder for our team, but within it we have this folder called released content. So um, for instance, we have content that's it's ready to be reviewed. So the students finished it, she puts it in there, lets me know, I take a look at it and say, okay, it's good to go, and we, we drop it into the release content folder. And then we just started this last September. So each month um, we add new content, and when we do that, we try to do at least three. Sometimes we only get a couple out. Um, but I send an email to this listserv of um, 35 different organizations or so and just say, hey, there's new content up. Um, Here's how you get to it, and don't forget, you can always go back to previous months and pull some of that content and use it again. So here's what our, our content kind of looks like, and um, so this is one of our graphics. Um, I actually, well, I didn't, I didn't originally do this one. Our student did one similar to this, and then I used some of her, her graphics to make this particular um, handout. Um, but, you know, one of, the, one of the simplest questions that we get is, well, we don't get it, we wish we got it, was how, how far should I stay back from a water body when I apply manure? So crop farmers who are taking manure from livestock farmers, if they're taking it and land applying it, there's no regulation of how they apply it. It's the people who own it, own the manure and own the animals that if they are operating under a permit, they have that restriction. But we would like everybody to know, you know, to stay back from the edge of a stream when they apply it. So, um, so that's what one of the purposes of this was, and, and Leslie has let me know that a lot of our custom applicators like to have this, uh, give it to other, other employees to have in the cab of their truck so they remember these as they're out. Um, so then the suggested text, um, like I said, each, each of the graphics will have a text associated with it, and we try to uh, tag, this is our Department of Environmental Quality, um, we always tag our team, so we're getting um, linked back to that. And then we add the URL for the article that, that was written about this topic. Uh, so here's another one from this past winter. Um, we had a, a very wet fall, and then we had snow in October, <clears throat> and then it continued, and then it was very cold. and. We had people, you know, just now getting out to maybe apply manure that um, accumulated over the winter. So we wanted them to know, like, we know you've got to get out there. We know you do, but here's, just keep these things in mind. And, um, and then we had, again, a link back to an article that talked more about it. And this was actually, this was an article that um, Dan Anderson from Iowa State wrote. So we, we created a link to his article <coughs> and, um, and shared it. 
Um, manure transfers in the state of Nebraska um, are an important uh, part of the regulatory environment there. So if I have livestock and I, I'm operating under a permit and a neighbor who is not part of my nutrient management plan, I don't operate or control any of their land, um, if they want manure, depending on whether I haul it and apply it or they take it and apply it, I can either count that as a manure transfer where it's out of my hands, here's, here's what you need to know about it, and then they take it from there, or I'm still responsible because I hauled it and applied it or whatever. So one of the, one of the things I would point out on this graphic is that it's, there's not a lot of information on here. You don't really find out what you need to know, right? But, but if you look at it and you say, oh yeah, I, don't, I would like to know if I'm responsible for that manure if it comes to my farm, then there's a link where you can go um, check out that article. <coughs> Like I said, we're trying to promote folks using manure who uh, maybe haven't in the past. And amazingly, I hear from crop farmers who say, yeah, I'd love to put manure on my field, but I don't think my neighbor has any extra or um, I don't know where to get it, which I think is, I, I'm just surprised by that, I guess. Um, so we came up with a set of these for each of the commodity groups that, you know, do our neighbors know what we have to offer? You get out there and market your material and, and do a better job of getting it to who, um, who needs to use it. Um, another one here for um, spring, uh, spring rainfall, making sure your holding pond is ready to, to capture that excessive rainfall you might be getting. This is one that Leslie Johnson put together that I think is, is awesome. It's, um, it's got a lot of good information on it, but it still goes back to an article that describes more, but um, just how manure and biosolids improve soil quality. <clears throat> um, again, this is just kind of going back to promoting manure, and all of our commodity groups really like this one. I know they, they send it out pretty frequently and um, um, seem, to, seem to enjoy uh, the, the different graphics and having one for each of their groups. Um, I, even, I even had to get on an election day because what goes better with elections than really a load of crap? So. <laughs> Um, so this was my, one of my creative um, you know, moments back in the fall that um, on election day I thought, oh yeah, this is a good time to talk about manure. I mean, <laughs> that's what we're really voting on, right? So, um, so we put this one out and it got a lot of traffic. A lot of people liked that one. So, um, so the other thing we wanted, we realized after we started putting these together was it'd be really nice to have these to hand out at meetings, some of them. Some of them aren't, aren't really relevant. <clears throat> for that use, but this is one that um, that I put together and ended up really thinking, well, yeah, this, this is one that doesn't matter if you're a livestock producer with manure or you're a crop farmer getting it. Let's, you're not regulated if you're the crop farmer, right? But there's certain, you know, there's certain things you ought to be doing. Just mind your manners with it. So that's what this one is about, kind of a list of do's and don'ts um, related to manure. Um, the one that Leslie put together again is a great one to take out to meetings and um, be able to hand out there and folks can take it home with them. We also take the manure marketing ones out there. Um, so for those of you who know me, you're probably thinking like, wow, Amy, I didn't know you were so creative and you could make these graphics. And I'm not. And I really didn't. But I have learned, I've been learning in the last six to eight months how to do this. And um, so my favorite tool right now is Canva, and some of you probably used this before. To me, it was new um, last fall, but we use it for this project. Um, we use it for our um, antimicrobial resistance project. And once we kind of, once we figured it out, uh, none of us that started using it knew what we were doing. Um, but now that we've figured it out, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to kick out um, graphics that that look good and, and tell our story and bring people back to the content that we want to get them to. So what's next for us? Um, like I said, this uh, particular project was, was really focused on brand recognition. Do, we, do people know that the animal manure management team at UNL puts out research-based um, information and resources that can help them improve their business? Um, so we'll be doing, um, We'll be doing an assessment, a survey of, of our constituents through the same um, communication network that we used for getting this material out. Just you know, asking those questions of you know, is is 
the UNL manure management team website, is that where you go to find information or you know what, where do you look first for info? Um, have we changed any knowledge? We probably haven't changed a lot of behaviors yet, but, and, but we will try to assess that as well. Um, as far as the products that we've put together, I've had other people ask like, hey, can I get a copy of that? And I think that's a really great idea. We haven't gotten it to a format where we can put it online and, and then people can go and, and borrow it and um, you know, put their, their own brand on it to distribute. But I think, that's, I think that's a good idea. That's what we do in Extension is we create something and people like it so we share it with them. So um, I think that's definitely something that we need to, um, need to do. And then, like I said, this is only part of our kind of overall manure value, manure, um, promoting manure and cropping systems um, program. And so we have on-farm research, we have the producer outreach, we have um, engagement with high school students through our, our different on-farm research projects throughout the state. And um, I actually brought a couple of the things to show if anybody wants to take a look at them. But, um, so these are some of, some of our printed um, materials here, but uh, the on-farm research in that, if you were at the poster session the other night, um, my grad student, Augustine, was sharing this information about this particular project, and this one's actually um, manure and cedar mulch from waste to worth, so we've, we've got a curriculum for the schools to use. He put together this really cool soil biology guide for students to use, and so along with the research, we've got the students involved, and um, and trying to demonstrate some of these some of these activities out there as well. So, to me, it's kind of a it's a total uh, campaign of getting recognized. Knowing you know we've got the information, we've we've got the data to share. It's it's do they know where to find it and trust the source? So, that's what this um, particular project was kind of about. So this is our um, manure management team, and um, this is my last slide, so I'm happy to take some questions. Um, I will note this, this particular part of our projects was funded by uh, We Support Agriculture, which is a um, state of Nebraska organization that is supported by all of the commodity groups that are, that are in the state. So they are promoting agriculture and um, kind of defending practices of, of producers. So with that, I'll take questions if you have them.